to honor God. Amen. Amen. I like that one of our shortcomings. We get in too big a hair, but like I said this morning, we, we like to fit God in. Amen. I, I got this, 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 this. Let me stop here and pray for about five minutes. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Amen. Sometimes we fit God in and not really make time for God. Amen. But yet, we want God to make time for us. Amen. Boy, don't you see me? <laughs> yeah, you see? But we need to make time for God. Amen. We give God praise and thank God for Reverend Douglas. Mm -hmm. I just thank God for him every time he gets up. Because I know so often time he don't feel like it. And how it is that time he pushes himself to do it. And then he was talking this morning and he was saying sometimes he just, his breath is just short. And I don't know, and it may not be something that some of you can identify with, but when you're speaking it, it puts pressure on you. And sometimes more so than others. You ever been just running and got real scared? You ever just got scared and lost your breath? <laughs> you didn't have to do nothing, you just got scared and you was out of breath. Sometimes that's what speaking does for us. It takes away your breath. And you know, people say, hey, ain't nothing to preach it. I guarantee you one thing, you ain't never preached. <laughs> Because it don't start here. It starts way before we get you. To the officers, we thank God for our officers. And certainly I give God praise and thank God for Brother Jim. Amen. Knowing his, he has been on a hard journey. But he is a strong man. Amen. Brother Jeff encourages us so. Amen. Blesses us so. Because you continue to do, you continue to press on. And we know just how important it is to just continue to press on in faith. To the choir. Amen. We thank God for, for, for the choir. Y'all are doing the good work of prayer. <laughs> Singing song, talking about the leak in the building, and talking about he's going to make a way. Amen. Your song is saying something. Amen. Brother Ducks, he got a leak in his bed. Amen. I got a leak in my bed. Amen. We all got leaks in the building. Amen. 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 Some of us think we got a little leak. A little leak around your floor, brother. <laughs> Amen. We just can't give God praise and just thank God for each and every one of you. And we just pray. God give the word that we we all need. Mm -hmm. You got a word. Amen. Uh, let's just open our hearts up to it. Stand for just a minute, if you will. The scripture gonna be real short here. <laughs> it's coming from the first page of Exodus, and it's just simply Exodus. Amen. <laughs> 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 in the scripture, and it's also the subject, the Exodus. When we look at the book of the Exodus and we say it's the title of a book. While it is the title of a book, it is a story of a people. Mm -hmm story of a people. It tells a great story. The story that deals with bondage, that deals with captivity, a story that deals with weakness and lack of power, a story of not having what I need to be free, a story of having everything taken away from me, of being robbed of my freedom, and being dictated on everything that I have to do. The Exodus is a story that we are so familiar with. The story of the Hebrew people. A people who was 
find themselves in captivity in Egypt. They are in captivity in Egypt not because they chose to be in captivity, but they chose a better way. And when they chose a better way, the better way changed. The scripture said that goes into Egypt and it goes in 76 people. 76 people began to multiply and they began to grow. Mm -hmm. And as they grow, circumstances change. The Egyptians began to look at the fact that they are becoming large in numbers. They become afraid. They become afraid and, and they're afraid that these peoples are going to come more than us and therefore we might become under their bondage. So therefore the Egyptians decided that they would begin to kill the boy babies, kill every boy, baby, every man, child, trying to hold down the population. But the scripture said the more they afflicted them, the more they grow. All right. And all the time, God is in the plan. It seems like sometimes that you're going through things and you say, well, why would God allow me to be in such situations as this? If I am God's people, then why don't God protect me. Why don't God bring me out? But I want you to know that God has a plan. Mm -hmm. And God has not forgotten his people. And the story goes on to how it was that, you know the story, y'all preached this. How that God raised up Moses. Mm -hmm. Called him and educated him in Egyptians of fire. And God educated him in the surrounding that he was in. But he also educated him with another education. He educated him with the school of hell. Teaching him how to be a leader. Teaching him what it was that God expected out of him. And not only was God teaching him, but God was empowering him. God was emboldening him. God was preparing and giving everything that he needed for the job. This lets me know that God never calls you to a job that he don't prepare you to do. When God calls you, he already knows you. When God calls you, he already knows your strengths and your weaknesses. And he didn't call you because you were strong. He called you because you was weak. Amen. Moses began to complain about he can't talk good and all of the reason I can't do this, God. Oh, my God, there's a message back there. How many of us say, Lord, I'll go. I'll do what you want me to do. I'll, I'll be what you want me to be. Then when you ask to do something, I can't do that. Say amen. Amen. Right? Amen. 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 But the story is that when God got ready, when God got ready, yes, sir. God began to send plague after plague. And Pharaoh says, these peoples are mine. I'm building a city. Oh, my God. I'm building my city and I'm using free labor and I'm not going to let them go. God sends one plague right after another. One after another. And every time he's beginning to release his grip and every time the grip and the, the, the plague is lifted, he go back. He go back to being his normal self. And he go back with his normal plan. And God continued to send plague after plague. But when God got ready, God sent a plague. And he said, this time, All right. uh -huh. this time he will let my people go. That's right. And the scripture said that all that came out of Egypt, they came out under Moses. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. They came out under Moses. And God would eventually part that Red Sea. And that Red Sea would be the exit point. Mm -hmm. They would come out through, a, a, through an impossible situation. Mm -hmm. 
that which was speak was impossible would become possible. Why? Because God was in charge. God was in control. And what God had proposed to do and what God had promised that he would do, God was fixing to make that promise good. Amen. And as the scripture said, the Red Sea was parted and the Hebrew children went across on dry land. Amen. They was the one that tried to come across and they, they drowned it. They made a song of that. <laughs> Pharaoh's army got drowned. It lets me know that God can make a way for his people. That the peoples of God can't come. Oh my God, what a word. I need to say that again. God can make a way for his people. That the people of God can't come. And where it is that you might feel boxed in, but you're never boxed in with God. Amen. It is a story of an exodus, a story of freedom, a story of how, regardless of how powerful the opposition might be, God has a way of overpowering whatever overpowers you. Amen. God has a way of overpowering whatever the opposition might be, regardless of how hard Amen. the opposition should kick against you, and regardless of how much it dominates over you. God wants us to understand that I'm still, I'm still in power. Amen. When I look at this scripture, I look at this scripture because it comes under the time of law. And I hope I don't lose you here because sometimes we get confusing about law and, and sometimes we get confused in where one thing starts and another thing begins. One thing stops and another thing begins. Correct. Under Moses, he was the lawgiver. Moses gave the law. They operated under the time of law. And let me show you something here. And as they had moved so far out of Pharaoh's camp, as they had moved, going through the wilderness, coming to where God had brought them, where God had intended to bring them, ever now and then, God would allow you to go so far, and then he would have to stop and try it. When Moses goes up in the mountain to get the commandments of God, and the people then began to build a golden calf, began to build another calf, but build another God. They began to build a God out of gold and said, these be the gods that have brought us out of Egypt. They didn't give God credit. They didn't give him honor. They didn't give him glory. No mercy. Because they wanted a God that would allow them to do anything and everything they wanted to do. No mercy. We got such a world now. Amen. People want to claim to be the people of God, but they want a God that would allow them to do anything, say anything, act anyway, and still say, I'm his child. Amen. And when Moses came down, he was, he was mad, and he said, who's on the Lord's side? Come over here. Some of them stayed with the God that they made. Amen. But they died Amen. under the law. The law was swift. It punished quickly. And so many times, let me teach you a little lesson here. Because so many times we're saying now, look like God did. Look like God will do this. But don't you know that if God began the judgment, He got to judge you too? Amen. Amen. I'm mercy. Amen. I'm mercy. Are you ready? <laughs> I ain't no Harry. <laughs> because I won't let God do his business. The scripture says now is the time of salvation. Why do I jump from one point to another? Because you are not living under that law. There is a new dispensation that you live under. You're living under the dispensation of grace. When Christ came, he changed the rule. He changed the rule. And you wonder why it is that people can do so bad and go so long doing bad because the bad people are under grace too. 
people who don't love the Lord, the Lord are still under grace. Amen. The scripture says he let it rain on the just and the unjust alike. But one thing you can be certain of, just as the time of the law came and go, the hour of grace will come and it will go. Now was the time of salvation. The scripture said, it did that you hear my voice. Heart, not your heart. And now I want to talk to us as a church. Because you see, the church is a called out body. It is called out from the world. And you see, when the word church was first used, it wasn't used in a religious setting. It was used in a governing setting. It was a body of people that are called out. And now we talk about the church. It is a called out body of believers. Whatever they believers may believe in. And Christ said one day, he asked the question, who do men say I am? Mm -hmm. And some said you are John the Baptist. Some said you were Elijah. Some said you were Jeremiah, one of the prophets. But then he said, now who do you say I am? Mm -hmm. Peter said you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Mm -hmm. Peter, Jesus said, the blessed are they, Simon Lord Jonah. Mm -hmm. But blessing blood have not revealed this to you. But my father, which is in heaven, I hope I hadn't lost you yet. In other words, what I'm saying, Jesus said, I'm going to build a church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I'm calling out a body. I'm calling out a people. And I put my spirit in them. I'm building me a church. I'm building a church, not on Jeremiah. I'm building a church. Not on John the Baptist. I'm building a church. Not on the prophets. But I'm building a church on the spirit of God. Amen. The spirit. The rock of God. I'm building a church on my own self. And when I build the church on myself. The gates of hell shall not be able to prevail against it. Amen. I spoke about this other night. I spoke at how it is. Now when we talk about the gates of hell. We talk about what it is that Satan is going to unleash from those gates. But the message is not about what Satan unleashed. It's about what Satan has the power to keep. And it is the story of the Exodus. The story of the Exodus gives us a picture of what Christ's church is all about. The church is all about, regardless of how hard Satan tried to hold and dominate me, he will not be able to do it. Why? Because Christ has built a church. A church that cannot be dominated. A church that cannot be overthrown. A church that will not prove. It didn't matter how bad Pharaoh wanted to hold God's people. He couldn't do it because God says I have called them to freedom. If God has called you to freedom, you are free indeed. Yeah. And a lot of us are still living in captivity not because the door is open. Not because the door hadn't been opened. Because we hadn't studied enough and learned enough to find out that God has set us free. We still allow ourselves to be dominated by Satan when God has set you free. I don't know whether you walk free or not, but I know one thing. The gate is open. When Christ went on the cross, when he died and when he set his feet, he opened up the gate. Oh my God. And I don't care how bad Satan wants to hold you. He can't hold you. He can't hold you. If you the mind to come out. If you have a mind to exit it. To come out of bondage. To come out of the control of the wicked one. I talked about here two dispensations. The dispensation of law and the dispensation of grace. But there's coming another dispensation. The scripture talks about the dispensation where the man of sin will rule. The man of fear is continent. The Antichrist. Many ways the scripture give him, calls him by many different names. But I want to tell you something. God has already made provisions for his church. Oh my God. Up on this rock I build my church. The gates of hell shall not be able to, to prevail against it. I want to look at something here for a minute. I want to look at something here. 
in Revelation chapter number three. I want to look at the church of Philadelphia. Oh my God. I want to look at the church of Philadelphia. Before I look at that church, I want to say something. When I look at these scriptures, we are living in the period of grace. Grace is the hour when the church becomes the light of the world. I look at these scriptures, I say, look how God chose to operate in the hour of grace. And somebody said, well, we don't need no preaching. I think you do. Oh, my God. Amen. Ain't getting no way bad on that. Amen. Amen. I can stand by myself on that one. <laughs> I think you do. When God inspired John to write, he inspired him to write to the seven churches. And the seven, the number seven means completeness. Mm -hmm. That means he inspired to be the letter to be written to the whole church period, the church time. And I want you to show you something there. When he inspired him to write, he gave them an angel or a pastor for each church. Mm -hmm. When he inspired him to write, he said, give the letter to the angel of the church. Mm -hmm. In other words, God is saying, I've got something to say to your church, and I've got a mouth to say it through. I won't speak it through your preacher. I've got something to tell you. And let me tell you how close I got it. I ain't talking about no jack leg. I'm talking about the one that God says I hold him in my right hand. I hold him. I power him. I'm the one that is in control of him. And he wanted you also to know where he stood in the midst of you. He said I'm walking in the midst of you. I'm right in the middle of you. Right. Oh my God. I'm sitting here hearing everything you say. I'm sitting here knowing everything you do. Oh my God. Did anybody hear this? Amen. 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 In other words, God said, I hear you when you whisper. Boy, it didn't come out of your mouth. But it did come out of my ear. Praise the Lord. Amen. He gave a messenger to each church because every church had an identity. In every church, he told them what it was that he was satisfied with, but he told them what he was against. When the word go forward and the spirit of God is working, there are some things that are said that you're all right with, but there are some things that are said that you're not all right with. That's what the word was saying. How it was the Lord would deal with your circumstances. I'm going to talk about two churches here. I'm going to talk about the church of Philadelphia. And I'm going to talk about why. Why I believe that God will rapture his church before the time of the Antichrist. There are people that has all kinds of beliefs about that. And I know not nobody's belief, but I go with the one that God gave me. Amen. As he talked to the church of Philadelphia, the church was of Philadelphia was called, was known, was looked at as the church of brotherly love. We know now that we look at Philadelphia as being the brother city of brotherly love. Amen. And he talked to the church of Philadelphia and how it was he had no problem with Philadelphia. That Philadelphia was a church that had held on to God. That Philadelphia was a church that focused on doing what it was that God wanted them to do. And he says to Philadelphia in this 10th verse, he says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. In other words, because you have been steadfast. I've given you a word. I've given you my truth. I've given you my order. And you have stood fast on those orders. And I also will keep you because you have kept my word of my patience. I will keep you from the hour of temptation. Mm -hmm. Which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Mm -hmm. Jesus talks about it in Matthew 24 and 21. He said there is a time coming up on this earth. A time that such has never been before. And neither shall be again. It is an hour of temptation that comes upon the world that tries the whole earth, that puts the whole earth to test. 
to test us. And what is the trial that he is talking about? He is talking about the trial of the dispensation of Antichrist. When the hour of grace has passed by and the hour of Antichrist have risen, he will put us through testing like the world has never seen. He will put us through testing that would say nobody can sign, buy, or sell, or trade unless he has taken his mark. He will put us through testing because the Antichrist rises up not to be a worshiper of God or even acknowledge God, but he rises up to be God. And the scripture says that he sits in the temple of God. And he may claim that he is God. And the, and the devil gives him his power. Mm -hmm. But Jesus says to the church of Philadelphia, when the hour come, because of what you have kept, I'm going to keep you. And I think I'm a member of a Philadelphia church. Amen. I'm going to hold on to the Philadelphia church, the mindset of the church. They say, oh my God, I may have to go through trials and tribulations. I may have to go through ups and downs. But God, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to keep your word. And God said, I'm going to keep you. Oh my God. From the hour of temptation that shall come upon all the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Oh my God. He lets me know when I come. The Bible says he will come in a moment. And in a twinkling of an eye. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast. Hold fast which thou had. That no man take away your crown. How do you let men take away your crown? When you allow them to get up under your skin. When you allow them to have more power in your life than God has. When their words and their actions can be more stronger than your faith. Because you are saved by your faith. And even when you come to the point that it seems like you have nothing else to offer, hold on to your faith. God has said that you will keep your faith. I will keep you. Let us know that that hour is coming. That the world is going to be tested. The world has to go through its trial. It was the trial that the children of Israel went through. Will you serve idolatry or will you serve God? We are going through that test. Praise the Lord. We see a full run of it now, but not the total picture of it. Hold fast what you have. Let no man take your crown. Him that overcome. I will make a pillar in my temple. Oh my God. Him that overcome, I will make a pillar of the temple of my God. And he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him a new name. Oh my God. The name of my God and the name of the city of the New Jerusalem, which come down from God. He that overcome, he that overcome, I will make him a pillar, a permanent, a permanent part, a part of the house of God. In other words, God is saying, when you overcome what Satan has thrown after you, oh my God, when you overcome, y'all know about the mansion that Jesus talked about? They had plenty of room. He said, I'll make you a permanent fixture in that mountain. You don't have to go out and come in. You won't have to run about your ups and downs. Oh, my God. You don't have to worry about. Sometimes you worry about yourself, don't you? Sometimes when you're falling short, you worry about yourself. But he says, I, whenever I fix it, whenever I get done with what I'm doing, you don't have to worry about it no more. You don't have to worry about where I'm in or I'm out because you will be a permanent fixer of the New Jerusalem and a permanent place for people. In the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God. I don't know how that makes you feel. I wasn't going to get excited. Okay? All right. Looks like it happened anyway. Amen. I will write up on him my new name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know what y'all have to call me then. Y'all don't have to call me River Gordon. I don't know what my new name is going to be. Oh my God, my God. Y'all better shout. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Preaching another gospel. No mercy. So in the falling away is not talking about your church attendance. As much as it is talking about whether or not you believe in God. Yeah. Falling away from the faith of God. <coughs> Getting farther and farther away from the way of God. Y'all hear me? The older people can testify that how it is that the spirit right here in our community has changed. Oh my God. I ain't saying everybody back in the right. They were devils too. It's always been devils. But what I'm saying, when the spirit begins to change in your community, something broader happens. All right. Than right. what's happening uh -huh. right there. There is a falling away from God. Uh -huh. Look around you. Uh -huh. People do not have respect for human life. Amen. 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 And what, what the scripture is saying, it says the love of many would wax cold. Uh -huh. He's not talking about an agape love. He's just talking about common courtesy and respect. All right. That that will go cold. That people will not even show you human respect. Amen. We are coming into that place now. Amen. Look around. Amen. Nobody cares about God. We changed the rule of God. God declared one thing. And man declares it to be something else. But still claim Christianity. Falling away. Falling away. And the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. He says, as the falling away increase, as people get farther and farther away from God, as people reject God, listen to what I'm saying. As people reject God, it opens the door for a new dispensation to come in. Do you hear what I'm saying? I know I'm boring y'all, but you better be listening to this. Because it's coming down the pike, whether you like it or not. When people get farther and farther away from God, they come closer and closer to Satan. Oh God. I know we, we may not want to own it that way. But that's the way it is. Falling away. And when the falling away get to the point to where it can, the man of sin will be revealed. And the scripture says, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God. He's not a worshiper of God. Brother C. Lee said it this morning in Sunday school. He wants God's job. And you look in Isaiah 14 or 12, he says, I'm going to get it too. But we know better. Amen. Well, that is, he opposes everything that acknowledge God and everything that worship God. He is coming directly against it. So that he, as God, that's what I'm saying, he sits as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. This is how he presents himself. This is how the man of sin will produce himself, will, will uh, put himself out there. Paul said, remember not that when I was with you, yet I, I told you these things. <coughs> I'm almost done. I'm almost moved out of the y'all. Mm -hmm. But it says, and now you know what hope that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity do already already work. Only he that let it will let it until he is taken out of the way. Let me show you something. Now you know why he has not risen up. Mm -hmm. He has not risen up because he can't rise up until the church is moved. Until the church is moved. Why do I believe there is a rapture that takes place before his sister come in? I believe it because there are so many scriptures tell me that in the Bible. Yeah. And you, whether you realize it or not, it 
is your faith. It is your faithfulness to God. It is your commitment to God that keeps the rise of the end of Christ from coming. And if you are captured and being held back by sin, you can come now and come out. You can exodus. You can come out and be free. Be free from what it is to hold you because it is not about what Satan unleashes. He's already unleashed his best shot in the garden of Eden. And it's just been penetrated down through generation after generation. He has thrown his best punch, but Christ has thrown the greater punch. Amen. Oh my God. Amen. And it didn't take the strength of God, it took the weakness of God. Oh, praise him. God didn't overthrow him with his strength. He overthrow him with his weakness. Let me show you something. John said, I looked and I saw the when when I was weeping because nobody could open up the book. I was weeping bitterly because nobody was found able to open the book. He said that one of the one of the beasts says to me, or one of the elders says to me, weep not. The lion of the tribe of Judah mm -hmm. has prevailed Amen. to open the book. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. And John said, then when I looked around, uh -huh. and I looked around and I didn't see a lamb. Uh -huh. I see a lamb. Right. Oh my God. Right. Oh my God. When I looked around, Scrapers grand and tall You may conquer all the failures of your past But only what you do for Christ will last Remember only what you do for Christ
power and its fame. The world might be impressed by your great name. Soon the glories of this life will all be past. But only what you do for Christ will last. Remember only what you do for Christ will last. Remember only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for Christ will be counted in the end. Only what you do for Christ will Until we shall meet again, let us all sing. Amen. 